So without further ado, I'm really pleased to welcome Kerry Brass from the USA. Kerry is a retired nurse, proud mother of two, feminist activist and WDI, Women's Declaration International Country Contact for the USA. So welcome and over to you, Kerry. As some of you may already be aware, American women have had two significant setbacks this week um, that I'll be updating uh, the broader group about today. The first setback is particularly dire. On June 24th, the US Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the landmark 1973 ruling that established our constitutional right to abortion, thereby turning the issue back to the states to regulate. The reversal of Roe means that abortion is now illegal or soon to be illegal, either via pre-Roe bans still on the books or via trigger laws passed to go into effect in the event Roe was overturned in at least 22 of the 50 states in all or most circumstances, including in some states, pregnancies resulting from rape or incest. In my home state of Wisconsin, the pre-Roe ban that took immediate effect um, bans abortion in every instance except to save a mother's life. There is no excuse for that law enacted in 1849 to still be on the books, yet here we are. On the day of the Supreme Court's reversal, Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin sent out an email stating that they have temporarily suspended abortion services until we, they receive clarification from a court about whether the law is enforceable and that they are exploring all legal options as is Wisconsin's attorney general. PPWI also proclaimed its intent to help patients get the care they need, which includes helping patients access safe abortion care where it remains legal, offering travel assistance and providing appropriate follow-up care when they return home, unquote. Of note, not once does the email reference women, the only people that would ever have need of an abortion. Many states are finding themselves in similar circumstances. And while the legal challenges weave their way through the court system, Women will suffer and some will die. It's a dark day for American women indeed. I want to take this opportunity to thank the women around the world who have been expressing solidarity while we find our way forward. Please know that your support is much appreciated, sisters. The second major setback occurred on June 23rd when the Department of Education published its intent to gut Title IX protections for women and girls. That the DOE did, the, did so on the 50th anniversary of that landmark civil rights legis legislation and that it presents this evis evisceration of our rights as something to celebrate adds insult to injury. Title IX reads in part, and I quote, no person in the United States shall on the basis of sex be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. The Obama administration and now the Biden administration have used executive orders to bypass the legislative process and further implement the gender identity agenda. Biden's Executive Order 13988, preventing and combating discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation, required all federal agencies to review their policies, regulations, and guidances to determine what revisions should be made to prevent sex discrimination. Because the emergency order does not treat sex, sexual orientation and gender identity as distinct categories and instead collapses all three into the category sex, the order obliterates the sex-based rights of women and girls and erases the very meaning of sexual orientation. 
as does Biden's Executive Order 14021, guaranteeing an educational environment free from discrimination on the basis of sex, including sexual orientation or gender identity, which more specifically references Title IX and applies the same harmful legal friction that Emergency Order 13988 does. The U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights first issued a notice of interpretation explaining that it would enforce Title IX's prohibition on discrimination on the basis of sex to include discrimination based on sexual orientation and discrimination based on gender identity a year ago. And on June 23rd, in commemoration of 50 years of protecting and advancing the rights of all students, it issued a press release that opens with the following paragraph. Today, in celebration of the 50th anniversary of Title IX, the landmark civil rights law that has opened doors for generations of women and girls, the U.S. Department of Education released for public comment proposed changes to the regulations that help elementary and secondary schools and colleges and universities implement this vital legislation. The proposed amendments will restore crucial protections for students who are victims of sexual harassment, assault, and sex-based discrimination. The proposed regulation will advance educational equity and opportunity for women and girls across the country to ensure that every student in America, from kindergarten through a doctorate degree, can achieve her dreams. This blatant mockery could not possibly be further from the truth. What the proposed regulations actually mean is that the right of women and girls in the U.S. to be free of sex discrimination in the educational arena is gone because men and boys can be recognized as women and girls under federal law. As many of the speakers argued at last week's rally in D.C., these proposed rule changes would lead to women and girls being denied the very opportunities Title IX was designed to protect. You can't protect what you cannot name. And as we have already seen in my home state of Wisconsin, the Biden administration's redefinition of sex to include so-called gender identity with regard to Title IX opens the doors to allegation of sexual harassment should a student use incorrect pronouns when referencing a classmate. Fortunately, the school district in question backed down and withdrew its Title IX complaint when challenged by legal counsel on First Amendment grounds. Under the proposed changes to Title IX, we can expect to see many more such complaints, which is particularly egregious considering the level of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and sex-based discrimination women and girls continue to experience here. Still to come, the Department of Education plans to engage in a separate rulemaking process to address Title IX's application to athletics. There is no doubt but that U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona's interpretation of what constitutes fairness and equity in sport will be much different than that of feminists, parents, and female athletes of all ages. American women, we have work to do. I'd like to close with a quote from New Zealand feminist Renee Gerlish from a talk she gave in Brisbane in 2019 that inspired me to step up my activism. May it inspire you as well. As Audre Lorde famously said, your silence will not protect you. So to women out there holding their tongues to stay safe, I say we are living in an era of rising authoritarianism and this ideology is one vehicle for it. You need to find your sisters. Now is the time to speak the truth where you can in spite of those who will turn on you or refuse to offer you solidarity and find your sisters. We are here, we are healing, and finding our voices together, and we want you among us.